Thrall, son of Draka and Durotan, gladiator, shaman, war chief, lord of the clans. How do we even begin? <laughs> Back in the late 90s, Blizzard was working on Warcraft Adventures, a 2D adventure game in the style of the old point and click adventure games of the early 90s. But I think that at some point they realized that the trajectory of games were moving away from that. And uh, they found themselves with a story that wasn't gonna be told then. And I think they had planned that this story about Thrall <laughs> needed to be told before Warcraft 3 in order to contextualize a very new take, you know? What, what is life for the Horde after Warcraft 1 and 2? How has it changed? How has time advanced in Azeroth? And a lot of that was going to be told through the experiences of Thrall, a child of orcs who grew up in Azeroth having never known his parents or really his people, and raised by humans, right? And Christy, you were there right when it first began. I wrote Lord of the Clans, which was the story of that game. I did it in six weeks. By the end of it, I was in love with Thrall, I was in love with Azeroth, in uh, love with Blizzard. And, um, you know, now here I am, and uh, Thrall's still going strong, and so am I, so it's pretty awesome. And a lot of these details, you know, when we dig into the deep lore, someone has to keep track of all of them. <laughs> And we actually have a department for that, <laughs> don't we, Sean? The, the origins of the lore team was because Chris Metzen, who was our, our, our friend and someone we know and love very dearly, he had the foresight to say, I'm creating so many worlds and it's falling out. I need somebody <laughs> to please run around and catch this stuff so and put it somewhere so when we need to refer back to it, we can because I, I don't trust my own brain. There's too much <laughs> cool stuff flying out. So at that point, we were now set up as a company to really cultivate and grow our franchises. One of the great things about this was that Chris was willing to understand that there is a difference between what makes a game interesting and what makes a book interesting. So we kept all the things that we thought were the really juicy and fun, exciting bits. And when I learned that we were making that shift that you talked about from orcs versus humans, you know, to- um, <laughs> A more uh, complex expression. Much more complex to working with a human in Pragmore. I was like, well, this guy needs to have some idea that humans aren't awful. We need a compelling human for him to say, ah, I see, I can't, you know. In contradiction to his human exactly, captors at the exactly, time. Exactly, because he was not being very well treated. <laughs> um, so I got to introduce a character named Teretha Foxton. It was a chance to interject something a little different from the uh, much more drums and fighting and battle and clashing of swords. There was like a, dare I say, a human element, but we all know what I mean by that, um, of kindness and, and uh, self-sacrifice and um, connections that shouldn't be able to be formed but are because everybody is willing to, to go the extra mile. Yeah, there was a whole scene in uh, Lord of the Clans where Teretha actually hugs Thrall, and that is the very first time he was ever given affection in that regard. He didn't know what to do with it. And even if you think about Thrall's uh, whole station at that point in his life, the, the orcs of Azeroth were being rounded up and put into internment camps, yet Thrall was a slave. So that, in the very beginning, set him apart from any of other of the orcs that of that time. Especially, again, and I go back to the book, there is a scene where uh, Thrall is standing surrounded by uh, guards and an orc breaks off from one of the metal cages seeing Thrall thinking he's going to be hurt and this orc gets brutally murdered trying to protect Thrall and Thrall's just standing there going, I don't know don't what's going on. What's happening. No, he the didn't know the he language. Saw an orc. He was raised in an entirely different circumstance than any of his peers at that time and I really think when he was freed that kind of gave him the kind of like the perspective or the POV to go, okay, um, this person who is probably going to suffer really bad things, Teretha, is going to suffer by doing this act. Why? She hugged me. Why? I'm, I'm, here. I'm here to kill things. That's what I've meant to do. But that moment kind of set him on a path. And uh, so I, I get goosebumps still thinking about it. just that moment of kindness and it changed everything. You know, I, I just want to bring that up because literally within the last month, I had somebody uh, uh, tweet me and say, you know, one of my favorite scenes, and it just always makes me choke up, is this orc 
giving his life to protect what he views as a youngling yeah. in, in captors. So it's interesting to see how these things that we not don't necessarily think are the most important things keep resonating, keep yeah. resonating. Thrall was thrust into a world in which terrible wars had been going on that he had no part of, he had no memory of, but the aftermath was all around him. And as he came into his own as an adolescent and was learning the legacy of his birthright and his parents and the Frostwolf clan that were his forebears, he started to see the scars within the orcs that had lived through those terrible times, like Gromash Hellscream, and had to learn more about what were my parents like? What was those times like? And he started to develop a bond and almost a, a reverence for, oh, I need to figure out what I am, who I am, uh, what it means to be orgish. And he did his best to try to learn from Gromash and they ended up becoming wonderful friends. The journey he takes, just like not knowing who he was to learning who he was and even then he had to prove it. Well, you know, and it's the whole nature versus nurture thing, right? So he can't separate one out and say, I am this or I am the other. He, he is unmistakably an orc, and yet in the orc society, he obviously comes with something else that they're not familiar with. Thrall did something none of his people beforehand did. He abolished the clans. He was like, I don't want there to be petty infighting. I want this horde to succeed and be different from everything it was before. He was really, in a way, forming the new family, not just the new horde, but his new family with, with people that he trusted, with Vol'jin, with Cairn, people who were not orcs, but they were part of his family, this horde. What he made, what he was trying to build, should last because it is not just honorable, which Orcus legacy is, it is also done in tradition of shamanic tradition, which I love also in, in Lord of the Clans was Thrall was the first shaman an entire generation for the elements to choose. Thrall was that new start again. And we see that over and over. He, like, we can atone, we can redeem, things can be good. And he was the, I wanna say the catalyst for it, but he was on, honestly, he, he was the main reason for a lot of the good that came came about. Yeah, and as we move, move into another chapter in this timeline, uh, what would you say was the final statement of the Lord of the Clans, Christy? Like, where did it leave off Thrall looking to the future? I think he had finally accepted his destiny, had finally understood that this part of him that had been uh, initially imposed on him, but later he accepted it, uh, of human, was a good thing. Gromish Halscreen said, you are the sum of all of your experiences and that has brought you where you are today. And that brings us right to Warcraft 3, which, you know, for today's discussion about Thrall, um, there's no talking about Thrall in Warcraft 3 without talking about Thrall and Jaina Proudmoore's uh, intertwined fates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another echo of Teretha Foxen, if yep. I may say so, so yeah. And Jaina, like Thrall, was kind of a second generation over the, you know, old soldiers of the First and Second War, right? She was a child when her father was battling the orcs, and as Thrall was a baby, you know, just growing up in the aftermath of these terrible wars of the past. And so both of them are like a second generation, and I think that fueled their ability to, to look past, you know, the egregious conflicts of their people in the past and say, what are we gonna do with this today? How are we gonna move forward? And what did they accomplish together, Sean? Uh, honestly, when you think about uh, Warcraft 3 and the situation that Thrall and Jaina were put in, so just to kind of set the stage, they were following this prophet that was going to every single leader of the Eastern Kingdom saying, you need to get out of here. Bad stuff is coming, we're, it's, we, we gotta go. So when they went to Kalimdor, it was that very same prophet that was like, haha, I got you to where exactly here because of a certain reason. We need to save the world. There is that thing that you're running from is coming here, but only together with the night elves will you survive this as a people of Azeroth. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a, a large leap of faith for a human and an orc to work together in a strange land, by the way. For Thrall, you know, the finale of that storyline when it came down to it was trying to find a way for his people to truly be free of the blood curse that was foisted upon them. You know, the blood curse of the orcs that had drank the blood of the pit lord Manoroth. Gromash was the first, yeah. And Gromash was the first who took the cup. 
And to see that storyline come full circle at the end of this campaign, as Gromash gives his life, right, to face down the one whose blood had in, in, enslaved their people all these years. The source, yeah. And in that cinematic, Gromash says, you know, I freed myself. And Thrall says, no, you freed us all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, and I really wish the, the cinematic couldn't show it, but Gromash was like burnt to a crisp in Fellfire. Like if we had the tech then, I, you, I really would have been clearer, but that moment was just so heavy. He was holding him and just being almost so fragile. This mighty warrior that he, he had known it's just as a friend, like mm -hmm. gave everything. And oh, so, I, so I got goosebumps just now thinking about it again, but. I think Gromash's sacrifice in that moment left an indelible mark in Thrall's brain that even through a life that the orcs had had to leave for, uh, to lead for better or worse, you know, as terrible as being a member of the Horde at its worst times was, they had to find their way out. And uh, Gromash made several mistakes even during the Warcraft 3 campaign. You know, he <laughs> subsisted and fell back into the blood haze that had driven them for so many years. But Thrall really believed that in the end, Gromash took, you know, control of his, of his choices, of his destiny, and made the right decision. And I think that would color his, you know, uh, Thrall's opinion about the Gromash family line at it some would definitely point have down an the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Important tale at this moment that we yeah. laid the seeds for. Yep, yep, yep. So anything else we want to touch on in Warcraft 3 era before we move on to World I'll of Warcraft? I'll tell you a fun anecdote. Yes. Um, I, after finishing Lord of the Clans, um, time passed and I, I, like everybody else, saw the, the intro to Warcraft 3. And there's a scene, of course, where Thrall, you know, bolts upright and opens his eyes and Thrall's eyes are blue, which no other orc has had. Mm -hmm. And to see him sit upright and open his blue eyes, I started crying. <laughs> and I was like, the, I was like, my baby! Because <laughs> I'd never seen him move before. It was just some black and white illustrations. Mm -hmm. So to see that come to life right in front of my eyes, uh, you know, I think we're all, we've all seen so much uh, great uh, advancement in this field and, and some fabulous things. It's hard to remember just how impactful some of these older ones were because you'd not seen stuff like that before ever. And I think that about brings us to World of Warcraft. The game released in 2004, which resumes our journey in Azeroth four years after the events of Warcraft 3. So there's been some time for things to shift or heal. And what was the status of the Orcish clans, Thrall's new horde, uh, at the beginning of World of Warcraft? So yeah, actually, um, once <laughs> once they realized, hey, the world is saved. What do we do now? Like you said, they were like, okay, we should start healing. Uh, Thrall, and to his credit, uh, took the took the horde and founded an entirely new land. But uh, he founded an entirely new land that really wasn't prime real estate. <laughs> it was uh, it was more of a hey, look at this arid desert land that we can have. This is home. This is Duratar. And why would they choose that area? The reason they chose Duratar, when they could have chose other lush places on Kalimdor, is atonement. Thrall knows his legacy super well. He knows the orcs decimated their world. They, the world of Draenor that once was is outland now in their continuity. So even though they did an amazing thing by saving the world, there was still this baggage that needed to be dealt with. There was a lot of history that needed to be atoned for. Duratar after his father Duratan, mm -hmm. Orgrimmar after Orgrim Doomhammer. That was a former war chief of the former Horde. Former war chief of the Horde that, that he, he was beat now in a single combat. Which <laughs> <was> all <laughs> a single combat. Didn't know who he was. Um, but, but yeah. But all of this showed an interesting, you know, juxtaposition between the fact that he wanted to create something new and yet he seemed to idealize some elements of the for a Horde that came before him. Right, like what, what, what elements of the Horde do you think he admired and was trying to hold on to? Growing up as he did, um, I think there's a wildness that he never got to taste, right? This, this passion, um, the drums, this primal ferocity that also uh, was tempered with honor. 
and you know, and here's the, here's the humans with their teacups, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's totally different. And so I think that appealed to him, and I don't know that he ever really understood it because he hadn't been raised in it. Even his dad, Duratan, wasn't a really well-known war, ch uh, not war chief, a chieftain at the time. It wasn't until Thrall was like, my dad is awesome, he did this, he was exiled by the Horde, really brought uh, the legacy of Duratan to the fore for the Horde. They're like, oh, let's learn more about this Duratan guy, seems pretty cool. And one of Thrall's closest friends, the one who helped him find this place and set the foundation of Orgrimmar, was, of course, Cairn Bloodhoof, mm -hmm. you know, the, the chieftain of the Torin. And when they found each other initially, when Thrall arrived in this foreign land, it was Cairn that showed him, you know, what it was going to be like to survive in Durantan. What was their friendship like when, when they first met? It was uh, welcoming. Um, it was, uh, again, uh, Karen was older. So this is almost another father figure, probably. I'm seeing family keeping, you know, just, just coming out of these discussions right here, right now, this theme of, of family and home yeah. mm -hmm. that keeps coming up again and again and again. And that was very much the horde of what we sometimes call vanilla World of Warcraft, the first release, uh, was that the horde was a group of people who had to bind together in order to find their place in the world, right? They had to lean on each other. And I think it was actually the partnership between the Torrent and the orcs that allowed themselves to finally settle into a place and call it their, their own. Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't do it alone, right? They'd been migrant, they'd been, but once they had each other's backs, they were able to put down roots and start building something for themselves. And that was, that was awesome. And yeah. we all played that experience in World of Warcraft. That's an, what, I, what I love as a tagline for the Horde is they're trying to survive in a world that's hostile to them. Mm -hmm. Like that is amazing. They're all banding together and they're there because they, each one of them, like you said earlier, they have each other's backs. Found families. Found families. Right, the families you, you build that are, you're not necessarily born into. The next moment of consequence for Thrall uh, I would wager is the first expansion. The Burning Crusade opened the gateway to Draenor, the shattered land of the remnants of the planet his parents got him off of before it exploded. And he got to walk through there with his own eyes and return to his ancestral homeland, having never seen it before, only the tales told by the other members who had been there. And when he returned and met people who knew his parents, who did he end up meeting there? Garrosh Hellscream, the son of Gromash, the heir of the bloodline legacy of one of his closest friends in the Warcraft 3 campaign. How did that go down, Sean? Oh man, um, uh, that's, uh, I keep going back to the Burning Crusade specifically because that was one of the first games before I joined Creative Development. I was in quality assurance and I tested the heck out of that game. <laughs> um, I, I love Burning Crusade for the moment that you're bringing up because it wasn't just meeting uh, Garrosh, he first got to met his grandmother. This is Thrall's first moment of meeting a blood relative. Mm -hmm. And the best part about that is he learned his name for the very first time. He was always Thrall. It was, he was told by Blackmore, yeah, I own you, your name is Thrall. And so even when Thrall learned how to write, he's like, I'm, I, I'm owned by somebody. It was, it's hard, but he was like, no, your name isn't Thrall. This is what it was supposed to be. And just imagine that, walking in like, this this is the destiny I've been hunting for so long. This is a missing piece that I, thank you, Grandma, but Grandma's like, yeah, but you should really talk to a person outside who uh, is, you, you might know, his name's Garrosh Hellscream. He's been raised on the dishonor of what his father had done. Um, to back up a little bit, where Thrall saw his grandmother was in an area called Garadar, which is another fun little lore fact is that was named after his grandfather. So he's literally coming to an area, like he named Duratar after his dad, he was coming to an area of his of, of, of family. Like you said, it's all tied together with family. But yes, Garrosh, when he met him, knew that his dad was the first to drink the cup and did awful things to the Horde. And Thrall saw them as like, but you, you don't know the good that he did. Yeah. Do you understand that the reason the curse is lifted is from the very man that you were feeling so down upon? You know, I'm paraphrasing, of course. Right, right. But um, 
there's a wonderful piece of art that we also shipped between the two just having a campfire talk and just the looks on expression in her eyes like I get to tell you the wondrous things that your father has done that you have no idea about. Thrall of course did what anything would do and he kind of took Garrosh under his wing. Mm -hmm. he, he stepped in as surrogate father with the opportunity to give Garrosh an opportunity to live up to what Thrall felt was the great legacy of Gromash, you know, the legacy he left is what mattered to Thrall, right? In the end, he did the right thing. And Garrosh, I'm going to fill in as that father figure and we're gonna find, figure this out together. And of course he took him back to Azeroth and wanted him to participate in his new horde and be part of this so they could find each other again. And the timeline now begins to deviate toward Wrath of the Lich King. At the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King, uh, a threat had opened up in the north. Both the Horde and Alliance were having to send forces to Northrend, and Thrall actually gives Garrosh com a high command on this expedition, right? S says, you are going to lead this expedition. Oh man, Garrosh is all really excited, and he gets in there, and he's being full orc, <laughs> all right? But he's being effective, and he's leading the troops, and he's making results. And Thrall can't help but notice the way that the other orcs are responding, the way that he leads his people, the efficacy by which Garrosh just seems to be a born leader. And he starts to doubt himself. He actually starts getting into his own mind about, oh, is this because of my human upbringing? Is this because there's some part of me that doesn't actually represent you know, what the orcs are expecting me to do as a leader. And I think he got really in his head about that. Like, what do you think, Christy? I agree, I agree. And also, um, he started pursuing the path of the shaman more. Right, he was trying to find and a center in the in Trying the to find center. And um, it's interesting because Garrosh is taking this and he's... He had that upbringing where he wasn't a real orc because he was sickly and his father was bad. So he's like, I'm not just going to be an orc. I'm going to be the orkiest of the orkiest orcs. <laughs> orc prime. The orkiest orc time, orc. All the time. <laughs> the problem is, is that uh, if that goes unchecked, um, a lot of bad things can happen. Imbalance. It's exactly. Not a good thing. At the, the very moment he's starting to doubt, doubt his, you know, capabilities to lead a, a, as an orc, having been raised the way he was, the moment everything the horde needed from Thrall started to slip away, and those th two things started to diverge again. Garrosh reached that uh, orc pride uh, level of oh, everything is not as bad as I was. So he went. He swung the pendulum, swung the other way. There were all their orcs of the horde at that time that saw that happening. And they, they also saw how the other orcs were responding to him. So there's a wonderful moment in Wrath of the Lich King, I keep going back to, where um, there, there is Varrock Sarfang, Garrosh Hellscream, and a few others looking at a strategy table. And they're like, oh, we just need to take it this way and do this way. The big point of that scene was, Varrock goes, you honestly don't know your history. Like, and he's talking about the screams of Draenei children, that orcs, like, this is your heritage. And then he lays the table all of the atrocities, and then Garrosh goes, well, what do you do now? And then Varrock goes, I don't eat pork. Like, but he's just telling you, yet, yes, being an orc is great and all that, but you have a history that you need to be aware of because this is a path you are not going down, and if I see you going down this path, sir, I will lay you out myself. And that was the promise that he made him way back then. So it kind of was kind of the, the flagpole of where uh, Thrall's advisors, Karen and Vera, are going, you need to watch out. He's not tempered yet. He's yeah. not able to handle it yet. He hasn't learned everything he needs yet. And this started to, as you say, uh, uh, Sarfang and um, Karen were kind of like, ah. And, and Thrall is like, no, but he really is the orc we need. He was on the, yeah, the, he the train. He is this, so <laughs> it started to become kind of driving a wedge between, you know, Garrosh on the one side and Cairn's friends on the other. Thrall had an almost blind optimism about Garrosh. Oh, absolutely. Right? He had a blind spot in as much as like, you are your father's child, I know that's inside of you, I, and yet we are all our own. Right, Garrosh will be Garrosh, his father was his father. But that really made Thrall always kind of doubt himself or always believe this will work out on its own. 
and that will inevitably come back to 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 uh, to bite everyone. <laughs> And even Thrall told him, he's like, lean on your council. I am, the Horde is not a one person, it is a group. And of course we saw how that played out, but mm -hmm. he, he did his best to say, you know, this is how it's supposed to be. You know, you may not be there yet, but these people will help you get there. And that about brings us to the Cataclysm. Probably the largest event that changed the world of Warcraft as we had known it, as has ever happened in this world. The Black Dragon aspect, Deathwing, emerged, cracking the planet all around and changing the familiar landscape of World of Warcraft. And because, of course, this was literally wounding the planet, right, cracking the Earth, Thrall was a shaman. He was tuned to the elements of Azeroth. And so he felt that. And it definitely put him on even a harder mission. It was now on his shoulders to try to see what he could personally do to stem the damage that Deathwing had done. You know? Yeah, there was a, a scene where a fire just broke out uncontrollably in Orgrimmar. Yep. And Thrall is trying to calm the, the spirits and he's trying to reach the spark and say, you know, go down to the hearth fire, you know, cease this thing. And it just couldn't, it just couldn't. It says, I must burn, I must burn. And then there's Drek'thar giving all those visions, saying uh, the, the, the seas will boil and the world and will the break. And the world will break. Yeah, so yep. all of those symbols around. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, the shattering, you know, was the prequel novel that mm -hmm. you wrote before Cataclysm. Yeah. And while there had been Warcraft novels, mostly they were like, hey, this needs to be told, this needs to be told. This was kind of a new, like, mid-expansion book. Yes. Its purpose was to say, hey, by the way, you all played Wrath of the Lich King, and Cataclysm's coming up. Give me the 411 on anything that happened between that period of time. So... Yes, yes. Was. This is where Thrall, feeling that he needed to know more about the elements than could be taught hmm. because the world, things were so dire. He decided to return um, and to study the path of a shaman in the, ground, the yeah. land of the orcs to understand their elements, to hopefully bring it back. Yeah. Um, and it was never a sense of, he wasn't abandoning, he wasn't running away. He was going toward what he thought could be the answer to stopping. The it. world right. was breaking it and was, he needed yeah. to go to a world that had been broken and talk to, to its elements. To understand right. what to do, Almost how to heal Almost a development it. phase, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, Azeroth has just been hurt and it can't even speak cogently with the elements because it's so in disarray yep. that to speak to the elements of Draenor, a world that had that happen, even worse, but how are the elements dealing today? Mm -hmm. How did they stabilize? Mm -hmm. What is it going to take for the elements to speak softly to them once again? Yeah. Uh, Any more? Oh, and we're also missing a wonderful character that he would meet in this uh, class that he's taking in Negrand, his soon-to-be life mate, Agra. Oh, yes. Uh, so, uh, th and that interplay too, Christy. I loved how here's Thrall, War Chief of Horde. Everybody in Garadar is letting him know, oh, this is Thrall. This is this, and she's like, who is they again? I don't. It's like your name is Goel. I don't. I don't want I'm you not to use call this you Thrall. Thrall. Yeah, that's 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 human. No, you are <laughs> Goel. You are starting from zero, and mm -hmm. I am your teacher. Mm -hmm. And that was a surprise too, like because it was his grandmother, Thrall's grandmother. It's like, no, I, I could teach you and talk to you, but I think she's going to have a more impact on you. She's like, what? <laughs> so that that whole kind of uh, interaction between the two, he learned much, and of course. Of course, we, we seeded a, a, a wonderful family moment there that would grow into more. But while Thrall needed to uh, learn more, he left behind Garrosh in charge. And uh, it wasn't that fully war chief at that time. It was kind of like a temporary thing. I'm off to study in the Grand. You hold the fort. And uh, everybody's telling him, don't do it. You know, that's not a great idea. To the point where Karen meets Thrall for a moment. And he's like, this is, I'm going to beg you, don't do this. And Th it really, really, really hits home in these moments because I had a, a similar moment in my personal life where you never know when it's going to be the last time you'll talk to somebody, especially your best friend. And when that exchange is heated, it, it really just hit home for me because the last scene in the book, sorry, spoilers, <laughs> the last scene in the book is Thrall's, uh, is, is Thrall standing on top of Karen's pyre trying to take the healing rune from his rune spear. But he was like, I really wish I could have told you. And a lot of the regret that he had, like the, this friend that he had loved ended, their last conversation was in, hate, in hate, hateful speech, not hateful, angered speech. 
but he won't ever get a chance to erase that, especially all of the stuff that he had done beforehand. This moment, I don't want to say broke him or crushed him, but it, it hit him harder than anything. And that moment where he learned, you know, I can't do this, that's when he officially took the Doomhammer plate of the War Chief and like gives it to Bane, saying, like, give this to my people, it is important. But I can't walk that path anymore. During the story of Cataclysm, we arrived at patch 4.2 which was Rage of the Firelands. Mm -hmm. And this was the return of the Fire Lord, <laughs> Ragnaros, once again coming back from what was 1.0, <laughs> a return in 4.2. Come back. And I worked on the cinematic uh, trailer. In this scene, it was wholly focused on Thrall trying to commune with the elements at the Maelstrom. And Agra makes an appearance. So she's starting to become a bigger part of his life. And he's just in despair. The elements, you know, I, I can't, I can't connect. And when he's left to meditate, immediately is an image of Ragnaros speaking to little shaman <laughs> or little shaman as, as Chris would say. Both Ragnaros and Thrall had always been voiced by Chris Metzen. So this is one of several scenes where it was Metzen talking to Metzen. Uh, <laughs> it happened more than a few times. Yeah, it's oh, happened more than a few favorite. times. <laughs> and um, this was him finally reaching through, but it wasn't the, the, the spirit he wanted to hear from. It was the angry fire spirits trying to burst through from the plane of fire at the moment of opportunity, given the weakness that had been created by the cataclysm. And so by the end of that trailer, we saw very specifically in that final image, Agra and Thrall standing together. Their bond is becoming closer, right? They're going to, they're going to be together as they face the threats ahead. And it wasn't long before the Druids of the Flame abducted Thrall and actually banished him into the planes of the elements themselves, split him into four and sent him off saying, you're not gonna mess with us anymore. You can't help Azeroth. And Agra rose to the occasion. She said, not on my watch. watch. Yes. <laughs> and she strong grabbed the player women. and strong. I love them. Oh yeah. She grabbed the player and says, we're gonna get Thrall back. And you adventured side by side with Agra, who to the player's perspective was still a newer character. They didn't know her very well. But through this adventure, they got to see the test of her metal. And then we got to see the wedding right afterwards. Yep. Right. Oh, man. I think that made a lot of, um, there was, you know, the, the, the fan hope that Jaina and Thrall would get together. <laughs> but she was there at the wedding, kind of. It was touch and go there for a while. <laughs> but ultimately, that chapter wrapped up with Thrall had a crisis of faith after the actions of, I don't understand the Horde anymore. I, I don't understand much of anything right now. I need time to find myself to recenter. And so he lays down the mantle of the war chief and he leaves. In his absence, the orcs who had already been following, largely the lead of Garrosh, who was eager and willing and had the capability of rallying the horde, fell in line very quickly. And he ascended to the war chief of the horde. But come end of Mists of Pandaria, uh, the time to face Garrosh was afoot. And the heroes and champions of the horde and the alliance alike uh, rose to face his insurrection at the gates of Orgrimmar and within. And as we know in World of Warcraft, the hero prevailed in the end, and Garrosh was felled within his machinations of this terrible horde he was trying to build. And who is the first person to step to Garrosh as he laid, you know, defeated on the ground? It was Thrall. As he approached Garrosh, wielding the Doom Hammer, he laid upon him the statement, you know, you are not worthy of your father's legacy. Again, Thrall admitting in this moment that the, all of the hope he had for Garrosh to be good, to be right, was born by Thrall's own high esteem that he gave to his father. Yeah. And he's just saying it plain. Y you had that, and yet you failed. And there were hints of that way back, even in the old war one. You disappoint me, You Garrosh. disappoint me, Garrosh. Garrosh. <laughs> so like that, and again, you, him, you're, that line that you said was kind of just like not, we've gone past disappointment. Mm -hmm. Like this was trial time. Like you, you, you have not just failed, you fall so short. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Once Garrosh was ultimately taken off to be imprisoned, the horde turned to Thrall, right? You're here, you helped us, you know, get it back. You're gonna lead, right? Thrall just wasn't ready yet. He's still in the place. Everything that he'd been through, everything, his doubts were actually exaggerated 
I thought giving the horde tooth <laughs> up to Garrosh was a good idea. Why are you looking to me for further leadership? All right. Instead, he reflected very clearly right back onto Vol'jin. There's one person who saw the path and got us here, and it was you. You need to lead the horde. And so once again, he is guiding the horde to its ultimate destination, but he's just saying, I can't. I can't be leader. It's, it's not in me. I don't, I don't have it. And that about brings us to the next expansion, Warlords of Draenor. Definitely one of the more interesting takes on an expansion I think we've expressed throughout the, uh, the set that we've created. Um, once again, going back to Draenor, but not the Draenor we visited in Outland. Instead, this is Draenor as it was. This is the world as it was. This is the orcs as it was, with one exception. Garrosh Hellscream, having escaped justice, went back in time, bronze dragon magic. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the first thing he did? He stopped his father from drinking the blood. Everything we know about Warcraft history was based on Gromash Hellscream drinking the blood from that cup. What happens if he doesn't? <clears throat> right? yep. And it went in this entirely different trajectory. And so he began building the Iron Horde, right? Mm -hmm. Almost technology out of time for them to be able to be the ultimate force of conquering. You know, this is my destiny, <laughs> you know? Um, and the adventurers came here, and who was one of the very first heroes through the portal to face the Iron Horde? It was Thrall standing side by side with Marad, the Draenei Vindicator of the Alliance. Side by side, smashing heads, and ready to take on, whoa! Okay, they've actually built a giant <laughs> army. Yeah. We need more men. <laughs> so, after having to be a little bit on the run, they have different ideas of how they want to approach this. Right? Marad with the Alliance, we want to go find our people in Karabor. What does Thrall immediately want to do? I want to, I want to find the Frost Wolves. Mm -hmm. And more specifically, I want to find the parents I've never met. Whew. <laughs> That's why he gets he got to see the sites that he'd only heard about in tales. Like it's crazy. But it really wasn't his. No. This is another version. And so I don't think it was it was gratifying to him, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't quite the same as actually. No, I, I think them. even in even in the narrative expression, Thrall understood this. Yes. Yes, right? he, he, did. he tried to stay at arm's length and be like, I can get a glimmer of what my parents were and stood for and I but I don't want to break their heart like like yeah he kept <laughs> at the, himself in secret at the, yeah he had to keep it a secret from them it's when you're messing with time ways <laughs> uh, and that just had to be heartbreaking because it's almost like looking at another apparition it's something you can't truly have it's something that's one just out of your reach you can see it but you can't really touch it as if it it still eludes him to this day right so that that's that's hurtful oh yeah jumping forward a little bit this is where he ended up facing off with Garrosh. And what a full circle this was, right? Um, the cinematic, uh, the Nagrand finale uh, I got to work on in, in 2014. And it was harrowing. It, the, it, to develop the cinematic what was uh, a trip through the fields, uh, because the full circle being that they fight this battle, this, this one more Mak Gora between Thrall and the orc who he had basically adopted as a surrogate son on the hill where they had met by Garadar. Where it started is where it ended. And Stone's a prophecy. <laughs> and as the scene plays out, all the history comes to bear. Even though Garrosh had become this horrific villain, in his core he was still the same child or young, young adult that Thrall had first met on that hill. And that child had been wounded and felt abandoned and felt wronged and felt alone. You left me to pick up your pieces. That's, that is an undeniable fact. That is what happened. Thrall said, I can't do this anymore. I don't understand it and left the horde in Garrosh's hands. And to, for it to have come out so viscerally, and I just have to give a shout out to Patrick Seitz, the voice actor of Garrosh. Absolutely. And when Andrea Toyas, our VO director, and I sat in the booth watching 
Patrick's performance through the window. When he delivered those lines and his voice is cracking, you failed me. The shiver in our spine was so visceral. It felt like, like someone had actually really just died. We, we, were, we were almost in a traumatic experience level of just emotional turmoil. And we all had to take a moment to just, that was really heavy. <laughs> but in the final burn down, you know, when Thrall turns it on him and the elements now come to his command and Garrosh is getting his last dig in, Thrall, you know, you made me what I am. And Thrall responds, no, you chose your own destiny. I think in that moment, he's looking back on Gromash and he's so disappointed. He's so disappointed that Gromash did terrible things his entire life, but in the end, he grabbed a hold and did the right thing. Redemption. And, and Garrosh had had many, 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 many opportunities to do the right thing, to have proven his mettle, to have shown just one bit of, you are your father's son. And Thrall's greatest disappointment in that moment, I think, is that it never came true. And that's just tragic. All of those best intentions, all of those steps and training and teaching and moments uh, didn't lead to where he wanted. And that's... And thus Garrosh Hellscream fell. Yeah. And Thrall, at the end of that cinematic, you know, the shot as composed, you know, you, you imagine, especially in high fantasy, orc versus orc, big, huge, you know, testosterone. <laughs> ah! you, you just think victory, right? You think victory, ah, I won. No. Nobody a, won a, that. A sullen shot, defeated body language, picking up the hammer and walking away and never looking back. And there was a moment in that fight, Garrosh throws Gorhel, and it actually skids past, and he goes in with his fists. Yeah. And I was, I was thinking that that was the moment, because Thrall had given him Gorhel. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful moment, and he was like, this was you the weapon of your it. father. You it's done great things. Mm -hmm. It's also done awful things. Mm -hmm. In your hands, it, yeah. it's up to you. And he drops it. He just drops it. This, this isn't my legacy, right? I'm it, not living up to my dad. You guys give him goosebumps. <laughs> But yeah, just that skidding pass and going in, it was just that moment, it's like he, that's for the failure right there. You can do everything right, and it can still go so awfully wrong. And mm -hmm. I think that was the lesson that Thrall took from this, was I, I wanted to make the Horde stronger. I wanted to give them every, op I wanted to give Garrosh and them every opportunity to thrive, and it was everything but. After Garrosh fell, Thrall, was still bearing the weight of the burden of how all of that went down, right? Probably reliving, you know, wishing, wishing things had gone differently. And that carried forth into, into Legion, right? Where, while there's a grander thing going on, invasion of the Burning Legion, and we have to defend Azeroth, <laughs> uh, Thrall was right there with the rest of the heroes. Jaina and Varian, all, you know, in Sylvanas Windrunner, laying siege at the Tomb of Sargeras to try to stop the Burning Legion. But even on that battlefield, when they were trying to hold back the initial assault, the elements were not responding, right? As we know, Sean, you know, you don't command the elements, you ask the you elements ask for, for their help. Heed my call. And, and, and then they either do or they don't, mm -hmm. right? But, and they're just not, they're not responding the way they should, right? And so Thrall got very, very grievously wounded. Right? I wouldn't say mortally wounded, but he got very badly hurt, as many people did. Many fell in the assault on the Broken Shore. Very few survived. And so coming back from that, you know, he had to go away. He had to try to heal once more, like this time actually physically. Go to heal with the Earthen Ring in the Maelstrom, get back his center, especially since he feels like he doesn't have the connection to the elements. Right. Something worse happened to Thrall while he was at the Maelstrom. Mm -hmm. He lost the Doomhammer. There was a moment where, like you said, like he felt disconnected from the elements. Like the, what he did to Garrosh was irredeemable. That was, like you said, it was a burden that he held onto. So he felt the doom hammer was dead weight in his hands. He felt that he was no longer worthy of it. He had fulfilled a legacy. He had made its prophecy come true. And now that's over. That is gone. That was taken from him. Physically, he lost it at the Maelstrom to the Burning Legion. There was a whole story about that before the player hero takes it up. But just, I keep thinking, him sitting back there going, you know, it, the Doomhammer is yours now. 
the, how much that must have hurt to say the words. And really, with all that had happened and all the terribleness, we really wouldn't see Thrall again until Battle for Azeroth. Horde and Alliance at each other's throats at a level that we had not seen since Warcraft 2. And these prominent figures now rising in the vacuum of power of, of souls we'd either lost or had moved on. Uh, Verox Sarfang once more comes to the fore and is now this major force and realizes that, holy cow, <laughs> I need to find Thrall. <laughs> he goes to the fields of, of grain outside of Karadar and Oshugun and finds a homestead where Thrall is living with his life mate and his children and is asking, please, please. And you, did you write this I cinematic? I did, I did. I got yeah. to write most of the... So, so the you got to be the pieces. screenwriter on this cinematic? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was really fun bringing, uh, digress just briefly, bringing Sarafang back because you have living symbols of various incarnations of the Horde. And that's lovely, juicy stuff to, to get to work with. What I love is that Thrall is like, oh, no, 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 no. For the I, third time now. Yeah. For the third time. Yeah. He asked yeah. three times, no, no, yeah. no. And he comes back and he says, you know, I've told you guys, you know, it, <laughs> I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not, I, I will not lead the horde. Starfine goes, I didn't ask. That's, I didn't ask. <laughs> Which was very well received among our, our viewership. They really enjoyed that. But I thought you would at least fight for that. And that had to cut him to his core. Yep. And there's a moment we don't know what he's going to say, and then it turns out that um, Sarafang has been aware, fully aware, of what's going on. He's been followed by assassins. There's eyes on him. Sent by Sylvanas. And the two of them fight back to back like they've never been apart, and they're going at it, and they have each other's backs. And uh, Thrall realizes there is nowhere he can go to escape this. He can't run anymore. He can't hide from it. He can't go back to the land and get his hands dirty in the soil. He has to face this. For him, you know, we, we have the overarching backdrop of, yes, you've got to save the horde. You've got to, you know, help save the world. But also deeply personal. He's got to really, you know, fish a cup bait. He's got to do this. And yeah. he made an X because... Some part of him knew that this day was going to come. He was right. yeah, totally. Thrall will always be the child of the, of the new age, mm -hmm. right? He was born after the events of so many, so many things that he will never truly understand. Whereas Varrock Sarafang is still a living example of someone who stood there at the first blood drinking mm -hmm. of the Horde. He has seen everything, A to Z. All of it. And to have those two side by side. And Thrall, I believe, you know, my, my opinion, my <laughs> humble opinion, in this moment is still reconciling with the notion of it's all or nothing, right? Either I lead the horde or I can't, right? I'm in or I'm out. And I think Sarfang in this cinematic finally challenged the notion, the horde needs you. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be more complex than that, right? It, there's no atta strings attached. There's no this or that about it. The horde needs you. And it's the times where you keep like backing off as far as just like, well, well, I can't be this. But you kept pulling the part of you that made the horde function out of the equation. <laughs> that is so fascinating because that just flashback to what we were saying earlier, Thrall straddles two worlds. Mm -hmm. he, you know, I, I can't be a human, but I'm not really a an orc, you know? And so he's doing it again. He is straddling, I am in the horde, but I am not the leader. I can still be involved in helping to guide it and shape it without having all the responsibility of what goes right and what goes wrong. So we're right back to straddling two worlds. Somehow despite everything he had achieved in his life, still feeling like an outsider. Yep. He took Verox's plea very seriously and when he did, it wasn't too long before he found himself face to face with an old, old, old friend, Jaina Proudmoore. We talk about full circles in Warcraft all the time, but holy cow, right? These two had literally stood side by side. As the cinematic says, literally, mm -hmm. that, that I directed mm -hmm. and you wrote, um, 
you know, we once stood side by side on, on the, the slopes of Mount Hyjal, you know, saving the world, and yet everything has gone utterly terribly since then. Where did we go wrong? What decision did we make? Why didn't we make the world be able to fix itself? The things that I think we all ask ourselves sometimes. It just like, keeps going wrong. Why? Every time we try, it keeps going wrong. What goes wrong? What are... What's different What's this different time? This What's different time? this time? And then when she says, you know, we are, that hits, right? Like... You know, we are older, we have the wisdom, we aren't relegated to make the mistakes of the past. Perhaps there is a way we can find a, a better path forward. And it was just so touching. And I always geek out whenever I get the opportunity to work with these, these, these pillars of Warcraft 3 in, in the cinematic medium, especially two at the same time, especially ones that have such a rich legacy history. I'm so glad we had the chance to do that. Uh, it, was really, it was really very meaningful. It was far, far, far too fun. Yeah. Uh, but right after that, that about catches us up to today. Shadowlands, which has been out for a few months now. And, uh, you know, the question is, what's next for Thrall? You know, I think that he has embarked uh, upon the journey that many of our heroes did, having been abducted initially, but then having to resist the forces of the Jailer and Sylvanas. And he's going to have a, a part to play as things move forward. Do you have any thoughts on that? His mother has not been idle in death. <laughs> and uh, she has earned her place in Maldraxxus through her refusal to give up, for her courage in sacrificing herself for her child, for her loyalty. Uh, she is now in, in a position of um, jeopardy and, and power of some sort. Mm -hmm. The Shadowlands is a pretty big place, but it's also smaller than you think. Yeah. I think also especially, Thrall has a lot of knowledge to give. Mm -hmm. I think especially now as he's not Warchief, he's a member of the council, I'm looking forward to uh, the voices that will come to him and him having the, the breadth of all of these experiences to be like, Sure, but this is why we shouldn't do that. Or to be a voice of reason, and in a way to channel that Karen, that, and Bane's on the council, don't get me wrong, but the heart of the horde needs to be there. It was Karen before. Thrall said it himself in the his tor funeral. Yeah, you the were torn, the heart of the horde. Yep, the torn of the heart of the horde. They really are. They're the, like the moral compass of the horde. <laughs> yeah. I'm not um, biased or anything. No, no, whatsoever. And, and, and as a quick rewind contextualization of council, you know, in the, in the aftermath of the, of the blood war, Battle for Azeroth, you know. Varok Seraphang sacrificed himself to depose Sylvanas Windrunner. And Thrall was there at the funeral, and Thrall was that here once again, facing the same challenge that has come time and time again. How do we lead the horde? Who leads the horde? How is the best way to lead it? Do we do we look to examples of the past? Do we look to other examples? And this is now, what, the fourth time, you know? He himself, while he was once the young, intrepid, you know, lord of the clans, he is now one of the oldest, wizened leaders standing amidst them. And maybe now is the time to recognize that all of those who lent him to his experience, who informed his journey, who maybe aren't with us today, from Cairn to Varrock to to all the, the, the souls that live within him as a member of this horde, he can bring their wisdom. He can keep it alive. But that's not enough. No. Not alone. Bringing together the, all the other members of the horde, Bane carrying on in the legacy of his father, and, um, and bringing new members in from all the allied races that are now joining to make the horde stronger, a stronger family, yes. more members, more. We are stronger and we will build and we will become the horde that we will always want to be. And I think in that day, it will not be Thrall's horde. It will not be Blackhand's horde. It will just be the horde. It will belong to all of them. Yep, it will, they will become their horde. Hmm. Or I like to say our horde. Our horde. Our horde. <laughs> I really get a lot of my geek batteries recharged just by not only hearing the tales that you know we have all shared these 14 plus odd years, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't like to say it, but just uh, I am very fortunate to be able to not only share the story time with you, but just to 
steal the creative energies that you guys share off with everybody in every meeting that we go to. So I honestly just wanted to say thank you for not only just this panel and this time that you're giving, but just thank you for your friendship. It's a little corny of me to say, but oh. I, I'm, I am very thankful for getting a chance to be with you guys. I have to say, this is amazing. I would never have thought when I was like, oh, should I take this book or not? I don't know. <laughs> All the way uh, back. You know, 20, <laughs> 20 years, years ago, ago, 20 years ago, people, <laughs> Uh, I never thought I'd be, you know, still working through the books um, and then get a chance to come here and work at Blizzard proper. It is an honor to work with you gentlemen and to um, inhabit these characters with our minds and our hearts and to find their truths and to try to bring them to life um, via the written word or the film word or the brains behind them. <laughs> No, I, I would absolutely reciprocate and echo your sentiment as far as just feeling so fortunate and so lucky to be here with such esteemed colleagues. And also, I think all of us feel the fortune to, to work on such an amazing uh, series of, of fiction, of uh, fantasy, of imagination that is, you know, Warcraft. It is a world that our players live in and they know it so well it is a real place mm -hmm. in our hearts and the thing about real places is that you will know when something isn't right and we always want to aspire to make sure that that never feels that way um, because and the only way to do that is to love it as much as we can and to try as hard as we do and to uh, lean on each other Amen. As, as we solve these things. So Teamwork thank makes you all. the dream work. Thank you so much for... Let's do this again. Let's do this yes, again. Yes, very much so. <laughs> all right. Awesome.